Welcome to Unit 3, Video Lesson 1. Today we're going to be looking at nucleic acids. This should be a review of Grade 11. And the video is optional because we'll be covering this in class, unless of course you are away. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to define and describe a nucleotide, recognize the structures of purines versus pyrimidines, identify which bases are purines and which are pyrimidines, Recognize, draw, and describe ribose and deoxyribose. Recognize, draw, and describe the basic structure of DNA and RNA. Be able to compare their structures and functions. And finally, explain complementary and anti-parallel. So we're just going to begin with a little brainstorm. Hopefully most of you have taken Biology 11 and see what we already know about nucleic acids. I'll give you a hint to start with. You should remember that all nucleic acids contain nucleotides. So whether you're DNA or RNA, your building blocks, your monomers, are going to be nucleotides. Now can you remember what a nucleotide composed of? It includes three key parts. Hopefully you were able to come up with phosphate plus sugar plus a base. And in the case of DNA and RNA, there is only one type of phosphate. There's no difference between the type of nucleotides. But the primary difference is the sugar. In DNA, which type of sugar do we have? About its name. That's right. Deoxyribose. Whereas in ribose, or in RNA, we have ribose. That's where the name comes from. And then we have four different types of bases for each DNA and RNA, but they're not quite the same. So in DNA, one of our typical bases is adenine. Which pairs with, I'll give you a second. That's right. Thymine. Ribose or RNA, sorry. We also have adenine. But if you recall, it doesn't pair with thymine in RNA. Instead, we have a different base called, that's right, uracil. As well, we have another base. And that triple bonds with cytosine. That's common to both DNA and RNA. Now, just a quick question these little bonds I'm drawing in here. What are they called that are holding the base pairs together? Make this over here and make sure we understand whether it's DNA or RNA, the bonds holding the bases together. Together are blank bonds. One we learned earlier that holds molecules of water together. H bonds. You probably learned about H bonds holding the base together in grade 11. And hopefully now, with your understanding of how H bonding works in water, you can sort of understand that we're going to have polar bonds where hydrogen is going to be positively charged and it's going to be able to interact with something else in the base that is negatively charged or slightly negatively charged. Okay, 
So now we're going to take a closer look. Hopefully you had that background from grade 11. We're going to take a closer look at DNA versus RNA. But first, what do we mean by the phosphate group? We often say that it has a negative charge. And for the most part in grade 12, we'll recognize the phosphate group as that. But we could take a closer look. The phosphate group is going to have double bonded oxygen off of it. Single bonded oxygen, single bonded oxygen, another single bonded oxygen. These often have OH groups off them, but they bind to something or give up the H, giving it a negative charge here. DNA is the same. The phosphate. Group. And also represent it most often, just like that. And sometimes we don't even indicate the negative charge, but for technologies that use DNA, we exploit this negative charge, and that's why it's important to note that it exists. So we said for DNA, the sugar was deoxyribose, and it's a pentose sugar, similar to fructose, but it's missing one of the carbons, the H2OH. Here, that's CH2OH. Now here, another OH. Now here, you have more simply just an H. And it's called deoxy. If you decapitate me, you remove my head. In this case, if you deoxy something, you remove its oxygen. And just one more note, each of these vertices represent a carbon, and we actually number the carbon. This would be called one prime carbon, two prime carbon at that vertice right here. This would be a three prime carbon, four prime carbon, and this is called the five prime carbon. That's important because when we talk about how successive nucleotides attach together, we say they attach 5' prime to 3', prime, meaning the 5' prime carbon is going to link up to the 3' prime carbon via a phosphorus. Okay. Now, if we go over and look at the sugar for ribose, same sugar, extra oxygen. So again, it's a pentose, 5 sided sugar. Each vertice is going to represent a carbon. And while there's other things going on at the other vertices, it's just the bottom two that we're concerned with. This time it's considered ribose, not deoxyribose, because it has the extra oxygen compared to deoxyribose. Off the top, we still have that CH2 OH group, which is where the phosphate is going to bond. And again, we number them the same way. If you're wondering what the prime is about, all sugars start out as a straight chain and then they fold up into their pento shape here. And when they're straight, we call that carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And as soon as they fold up into the ring structure, we add a little prime after the number. So that's all that means. Prime just looks like an apostrophe. Okay, then we have the bases. And in DNA, our purine, our adenine, and guanine. And all purines have this basic structure. They might have different nitrogens in them, but they have the basic structure of a hexose 
attached to the petals. So the way I remember it, purine, two syllables, and they have two words. You also have to remember which bases are the purine, adenine, and guanine. And that's pretty simple to remember thanks to little mnemonic, pure for purine, acid, and grape juice. Purine, adenine, guanine. Pure apple and grape juice. Okay. In the case of RNA, same bases, so, so same purines, and same structure. There's no difference. Then we have our pyrimidine. Now this is a little bit weird because if you count syllables, you're going to think it has four rings, and that's not exactly it. We're going to ring structure-wise. It's just a simple hexagon structure with some nitrogens in there, and it includes cytosine. And the way I remember that the pyrimidine is just a single ring, big word, little structure. Okay. Or if you remember what purines are, just by default, pyrimidines have to be that as well. Okay. How do we remember which one bases are the pyrimidines? We use C, the pyrimidine. Cytosine, thymine, pyrimidine. Okay. And ribose, cheat thymine, is replaced by uracil. U D pyramid. Okay. We're just gonna stop it there. And that is part one in the video. Again, this was optional. Part two will be also optional unless you are late. We'll pick it up in part two. If you have any questions about this section, you can come see me in class.